Hey team, welcome back to the basics. So I'm gonna do another long overdue video about why I'm done carrying the MNP Shield as my main concealed carry and why I've transi transitioned over to the MNP 2.0 Compact. Before I talk about this, we'll talk a little bit about the Shield and kind of uh, the pros and the cons and why I've moved away from it. You'll remember a few years ago, if you saw the video, I talked about why I felt like the MNP Shield was really the only gun I needed for concealed carry. And I still feel like that's pretty true today. I mean, if you took all my other handguns away and told me that I had to carry the shield, I would feel pretty good about that. For the size and the weight, it conceals very, very easily. It's super comfortable to carry. You get pretty good magazine capacity. In fact, I would argue the best magazine capacity out of any handgun that size on the market. And you really don't lose much performance capabilities like you do with a lot of subcompact and compact pistols. It's a really great option. And for me, just being sort of a regular guy, I think it helps prepare me and whoever else uses it for most reasonable scenarios that a normal guy would have to handle on the streets in a given scenario. To include some active shooter type, type deals. Um, it's gonna be lacking a little bit in that aspect, especially compared to some of the other options. But again, I just feel like if that's all you had, that would be pretty adequate pretty good despite some of the things that these other options have. However, just being adequate and sort of being that bare minimum, like this is all you need, obviously there's better things out there. And for me, I was looking at finding something between the shield and the full size, which were the only two handguns that I really carried at that point. The full size being just a little bit too big, a little bit too bulky, especially for uh, summer concealed carry. And um, the shield, like I mentioned, just had a, a few issues that we'll, we'll talk about here in a minute. So the, the options at that point were like a Glock 19 or some of the other smaller Glocks, which I, I like Glocks, but I'm not a huge fan of them, or some of the mid compact options in the M&P line, which the M&P 9 had just a, too short of a grip for me. And uh, you couldn't do some of the full size lighting options. So once this thing hit the market, I was all about it. A few small things, and then we'll get into the main reason. Magazine capacity, like I said, it was okay for me. The way I had it set up with the Mag Guts insert, I've got, eight or nine plus one on the gun and then uh, eight plus two on my belt. So 10 on my belt, 10 in the gun, that was just fine for me. But you can always do better and if you can carry a bigger gun with more bullets, eat just as easily as you can carry this, then you might as well. Some of the bigger things though uh, were the performance that I was getting out of it. I've since been able to shoot handguns a little bit better since three years ago. Thankfully I am improving in that aspect a little bit. And I've noticed, especially now when I've gone back to this, granted I haven't practiced with it much, this gun just is, is a bit more snappy than like your mid-size and full-size guns. There's less mass to it, so you're gonna have a sharper recoil impulse, which means it's just gonna be a little bit harder to control. Your sights are gonna settle on the target just a little slower, just because of that extra recoil. So it's gonna be a little harder to shoot in a defensive scenario accurately and uh, as fast as you could with some other options. It was still pretty accurate. I mean, out to 20 yards, you can get pretty good chest-sized hits, but Again, because of the reduced size, it's just harder to grip onto. And I've, I don't have huge hands by any means, but the smaller grip you have, the harder it is to control. So it's gonna move around a little bit more in your hands. And then because the grip is smaller, you don't have, it, depending on the size of your hands and your fingers, your interface with the, the trigger is gonna be not as ideal, at least for me, with my trigger finger. So there were some issues with performance. Again, you could get by in, in, in most concealed carry scenarios, but there is definitely a better option in the 2.0. Additionally, with the grip, just grabbing it from concealment, I was still pretty fast and had consistent grips with it. But again, just because it was a little smaller, it just kind of felt a little small in the hand. Like I didn't ever feel like I had a perfect grip on it. And most times if I was shooting it for long enough, I'd kind of have to take a few shots and sort of milk, milk the grip a little bit and readjust. So doable, but not ideal. Another thing which I don't think is a huge deal is the lighting capabilities for it. You can get smaller lights that'll fit on this, which are really just designed for concealed carry. They're not gonna give you a whole bunch of penetration like through the darkness at extended ranges. Lumens are not gonna be as high, but they're just not as good as like the full size options like the X300 here. Um, that being said, I was comfortable just not running a light. I tend to think that as long as you train with and have a really good handheld like this, then you'll be good to go from like a basic concealed carry scenario because you're gonna be using this anyways. And especially with this Thyrum clip, you're gonna be out searching for threats with this anyways. And then once you see a threat, you can flip this over and maintain a pretty good grip on your handgun anyways. 
you're not gonna be searching with this. This is only gonna come out and, and be used once you're on target, and this is already gonna be in your hands. So training and using this in conjunction with the shield, I didn't feel like I was losing that much, but the biggest reason why I got away from the shield and moved to this wasn't so much with the magazine capacity, wasn't so much that I could put an RMR on it, but it was that I had consistent training between platforms. I didn't want to have to go to the range and spend most of my time running concealed carry with this thinner gun with a very distinct trigger squeeze and recoil impulse and all that. The reloads were different. And then have a different full size light or full size handgun with a different light on it for home defense. And I didn't want to have to use this for home defense, obviously. And then also using the full size gun for two guns and then potential bug out scenarios. For me, it was all about having one gun that could go between platforms that I could just train with this and then use the full size and whatever capacities I wanted to moving forward. So that's the biggest reason I got this. It was the smallest gun that still felt and ran just like my full size that I could get. So I knew that if I get this, I'm gonna have a real full grip on it. It's gonna have a little less uh, recoil, less felt recoil, so I'm gonna be able to run it a little bit faster. The sights are gonna settle on target more. I mentioned plus magazine capacity. This is a 15 plus one, so I've already got six rounds more in the gun ready to rock. And then you can go from anywhere from 15, 17 on your belt up, up to 20 and 23, and I'll talk about that in another video. But you get a lot more capability out of this. Long range shooting is a little bit easier for me just because of the bigger grip. My, my, trigger, my trigger finger fell more naturally on the trigger. Bigger grip means I can just control it a little bit better and run a little bit faster. And so I can train with this all the time and then just pick up my full size and it's gonna be about the same. The reloads are gonna be about the same. The recoil is gonna be about the same. Trigger placement and, and, and squeeze are gonna be about the same. So right away, I've got one gun that I'm using for everything or at least I can move between platforms. Running the same light for concealed carriers for home defense, same sights, all that. And again, the biggest thing, especially when I'm using the uh, G-Code NCOG holster, I've modified it a little bit, but this thing conceals really, really well, even in the summertime. And there's there's not much printing at all as long as I'm not wearing like a super thin t-shirt. I've won two gun competitions with this. I've been able to do conceal carry drills much faster, much more consistent than this. It's just a really good performer. And I guess I'll do a more in-depth review on this later. But another thing I failed to mention, not a, not a huge deciding factor, but just the perk between going from the shield to this is the ability to run an optic on here. Now, I have seen there are certain types of optics you can put on the shield. I'm sure there's a way you could figure out how to get an RMR on there, but you'd have to run a big old plate on top or something. But for me, if I was gonna do an optic, I would get an RMR and there just weren't a ton of options for the shield. So I thought at some point, yeah, I might wanna run an optic on a handgun. I ended up testing it out for a bit on my father-in-law's M&P core, and I decided that I liked it enough to put it on my main concealed carry gun. And I'll do another video about that in the future. But the biggest thing for me, aside from just getting experience on it so I can help other people make decisions, was that this helps you become a better shooter. You can see things that you're doing wrong with the dot that you don't see with the irons. I've mentioned some of the performance enhanced features with this that you don't necessarily get with the shield. How that sort of translates into real life applications. You'll be able to handle more threats with this. You'll be able to shoot a little bit faster with this. You'll be able to shoot more accurately, especially at distance, which is a huge thing when you're talking about counteractive shooter stuff, which is honestly one of the biggest reasons I carry nowadays. I have a lot more confidence in taking a longer shot with this full size gun than I do with this. So it just means you don't have to waste time closing the distance to take a shot with this platform. You can stand in place or at least just have more confidence taking that shot with the MNP 2.0. I guess just to summarize, really pumped about this gun. I'll probably do another in-depth review on it in the future. Um, I'm gonna do another video shortly talking about some of the, the other magazine options that we have. The shields, I still use it for sure. Um, it's definitely still a great gun. When my wife gets her concealed carry permit, um, it might be the one that she grabs and, and keeps with her. But for me, when I'm not able to carry my full size just because I'm getting really dressed up or if it's just really hard to conceal, 
I'll run with the shield. I'll run it with like a little belly band tucked in. That works really well for weddings and things like that. So still a really great option for when you can't conceal something bigger. Also, if I'm going on a run and I wanna have something really light in my 511 pack, um, I can do that. It's a great just sort of backup gun to throw in a bug out bag to have with you. So there's still a, really good, a lot of really good uses out of it. Hope that helps you guys if you're sort of on the fence about getting one of these two guns. You can't go wrong with either one. I would just say, do you prioritize comfort and concealability or do you prioritize performance and training consistency between platforms? Although I don't want to undersell the comfort of this gun. It's heavier, it's a little less concealable, a little more noticeable, especially with the light on there. But uh, I can still conceal carry this all day long, even in the summer. So. Unfortunately, you kind of just have to get a gun and try it out to, to know, but both are great options. Hit me up if you have any questions about either one and stay tuned for more videos where I cover some of the stuff that I've mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching.